All right, let's do a live on a first Friday edition of the program. Merely Bo, the great Z. I didn't bring water in here. Uno, water! Oh, there you go. Good job. How you living, buddy? Thirsty now. Oh, Uno. Uno's looking for that fourth arrow up. Griff is on a heater. The stock report Came right in now. early. I said earlier today, I said when Griff started last July, and I think he was unsure of us, we didn't know really what to make of Griff at that moment. And then now, if you had bought stock then, if you said, yeah. you know what, I think that there's something special going on here, and you bought that stock, it would be like saying that you bought Bitcoin when it was like a dollar. That's right. That's what Griff's done. It's a rocket Just, ship. <sighs> yeah. It was all, I mean, it, you could. It Uno was one came of those in things. hot. Uno oh, was like was an IPO of like a, a, known, a yeah. known company. It's right. like you didn't need uh, Belfort to come on there with the Steve Madden IPO to hype it up. Like yeah. It was known. Yeah. It was you, known. you came on in, and so that was it. Yeah, but no, they're both, they're both doing great work. Uh, I'm very proud Uno, of both of them. I love proud. the fact that Uno is now being recognized publicly. I think yeah. that's great. Griff's next. And I learned that Uno, Griff is... Griff's going to play such a big role in some of our future plans that it's very exciting. Oh, my gosh. Perhaps even partnerships. Yes. It's it's not out of the question. And then Uno showing an aptitude for marketing that I was very pleased at discovering today. Yeah. Well, he's thinking outside the box. Minored in marketing in college, so well, I have a little bit in there. Well, there a little bit of knowledge. Duh. Of course he did. Of course he does. Why wouldn't he? Duh. Wouldn't he winning. I'd like Uno to start talking like Charlie Sheen. It's like, duh. Duh. Winning. Uno's good at marketing. Duh. Winning. There's a moment in time, right? Yes. When he was doing that. That was that was all tied to the two and a half men negotiation. Is that what that was? Like he was they he, they were trying to get him to do more him of out. it. He w- and he was out. They tried to get him to do more of it. He wanted more money. He was a holdout. And then they said, Fine, you're out. We don't need you. They brought Ash in. And they brought was he the first one they brought in? I think so. He was a, he was the first permanent. Yeah. So they did that, but then like and then he just went off. Tiger blood. Off. Tiger off blood the- winning. All of it. The winning was un- winning was unbelievable. <laughs> Duh, winning. Duh, winning. Yeah, that was a lot of it. Do you that guys was, even know about that? I don't think they probably do. That was a moment in time. Probably is it as much as eight years ago, seven years ago? I was gonna say, 20. or is it even longer? I you think it's twenty? Now it's definitely social media was around for sure. I think I think it's probably the answer is probably like twelve. Well, if it was after two and a half men, oh, that's, that's a good point. That's been a long time. Like that show. I mean, that kid's all like. And it's, it's, it's got to be 30 now, right? The kid that was in that show. All right. I'm going to get to the bottom of this right now. Um, I think you might be. Actually, you might be right. It might even have. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. He did anger management from 2012 to 2014. So, so we're at least we're before at that. At least a decade ago. Um, uh, two and a half men. Was roasted. Let's see. It looks like it's like 2011. They terminated the contract in March of 2011. 2011. 13 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. They were like two years old. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been before I was. Yeah, you were locked in. So like social that. media was around, though, because I remember it being a big Twitter thing oh, at the my, time. Yes. Like it was like, did you see what he did? Did you see the tweet? Oh, yeah. It was. Yeah. A, I, I, I still send him in gift form quite a bit. A nice duh winning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was always a he's just a huge baseball guy. So yeah. would always get excited like when the Indians would make a run in the postseason, he'd he'd jump a little well, bit. He was the wild thing, the and he was the wild thing. Yeah, the I think uh, is that his Mount Rushmore? You know, if we were doing the rewatchables, I think it's probably Wall Street. You mean his apex? His a, yeah, apex. his apex is probably Wall Street. <sighs> wild thing, Rick Vaughn is so I'm iconic. saying it, it I agreed, but Wall Street's. Academy Award Best Picture. Sure. He's the lead in an Oliver Storm, a Stone movie with Michael Douglas. Goes toe to toe with him. Like that's coming out of Platoon. So like he's doing Wall Street, Platoon, into like Young Guns, and then eventually into into uh, Rick Vaughn. Like all that's around the same time. And Hot I think, Shots, not. I think not. Apex. Then it falls off. But I think that the I think it's probably Wall Street. It's probably okay. the Apex Mountain right. for him. Yeah. Emilio West of his brother. Yeah. How about that? By the way, you mentioned Michael Douglas. You see, he's in Apple Plus is apparently doing all kinds of crazy historically historical awesome epics. Yeah, so they did the the fly one that I'm going to watch hopefully tomorrow on the plane. Yeah, mem- if, uh, Masters of the Air. Masters of the Air. And they then did they, Napoleon, which was supposed to be the t- Napoleon movie or the movie. series. So the movie bombed though, right? The Joaquin Phoenix one. Yeah, I think it bombed. I don't know. It looks good. It did. The trailers looked awesome. Yeah, I, I think it bombed. Okay. Um. And I know they have a Lincoln thing have, coming out, like Manhunt. 
Yes, which has the guy from Masters of the Air is in it. Okay. And he's the the one who assassinated Abraham Lincoln. John Wilkes. John Wilkes Booth. Yeah. Yes, that's who he plays. And then there's a one one coming out about Ben Franklin and Ben Franklin like going over to France to get them to help us out in the Revolutionary War, starring Michael Douglas as Ben Franklin. Wow. How old is Michael Douglas now? He's got to be know. early. Is he early eighties? I don't know. It looks hey in this one he looked good. I was into it. I, I like I like. He's seventy nine. He's seventy nine. Seventy nine. And then the crazy thing is, so at age, it's twenty four. So at age fifty five, begged uh, Catherine Zeta Jones at yep. her prime, straight yep. off of yep. uh, like Zorro and all that. Yep. Good That's job right. of him. Great job. Yeah. Very good job. Um, no, I'm, 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 I'm interested in that stuff. I'm very curious. We fly tomorrow. I, in my head, I had that it was a five hour time change, but, uh, a Hawaiian told me it's six. That's right. So it is six and it's, it's probably flight time total. You're going where through where Well, it's 12. It's Phoenix. I mean, it's 12 hours of it's 12 hours of total time that I'm going to be Actually, it's 13 now because I was working under a five-hour time change, but a six-hour time change tells me it's actually more like 13 hours of total flight. We leave tomorrow like at 7. Yeah. Uh, we get into Honolulu tomorrow around 3.30 their time. So that's 8.30. No, that's 9.30, 9.30 our time. Yeah, so 14 so that's, that's, hours of travel. That's a full day. Here's the thing that you guys just all have to come to terms with is that you are likely – now you're going for – a good amount of time so maybe as yeah. it progresses you'll get there but for the first few days like you're going to wake up at like 4 30 in the morning and you're just gonna have to go yeah. and eat breakfast and you will be asleep they they're open yeah they they got because they got to know that they people know are people all are just screwed up all messed up yeah yeah so i my i wouldn't even mind staying on like a 5 a.m start your day yeah that's gonna that would be okay that, that's gonna happen but okay it, i don't know if you're okay with like a 5 a.m bootsy might just be well, he's going to be shot out of a cannon because the first night, the first two nights, we're staying in Honolulu at the at, at a Disney. So he is going to be oh man tomorrow upon arrival. So it's a Disney he's hotel. Be, yeah, he's going to be shot oh, out of a man. cannon. It's a resort thing with the Mickey. Disney characters and all that business. Mini. So he's got like we were just at Disney a year ago. He's got like his little thing for the autographs, and you know how he feels about stuffies, oh, and God. you witnessed it. So um, yeah, he's his zest is going to be whatever his zest can be tomorrow after a fourteen hours of travel yeah it'll be there it'll be oh, to a 12 full zest yeah yeah i'm gonna the miss key them. is you're gonna have to sleep i'm gonna, they, they gotta sleep. I'm gonna miss those guys in the streets I'm gonna be oh, i know it, they're, all you're on there you're, you're the streets on again. your own yeah you were into it last night i yeah. was making dinner and they were playing Fortnite with you i think still, they still haven't grasped the yeah. health is the most important thing your best ability is availability how do you have availability by having health that's it and when you have no health it is. You could be one shot away from yeah. So they they're just not they're not med kidding the way that they need to. No, or they're, they're carrying not avoiding... boots. He's still carrying bandages. I'm like, what are we doing here? Didn't NBC light him up for that? He did. He did. Yeah. It's like, what are you doing? No, none of them had a med kit. Not one. I was like, nobody has med kits. What are we ta- What are we doing here? We could have a med kit. We're like racing through the storm. I'm dying in storm because <laughs> like in the team you want to spread that out so that yeah. you know everybody's got some so you ever can have more you know weapons and whatnot. But yeah, that's, that's what we were doing there. Yeah. There you go. Um, do we, did we have, do we have some news here? Looks like we, we have, do have uh, some news. Confirmed the signings of Janus yeah. and Tyler Huntley. So yes. That's happened. Yes. We got a crazy, a crazy text yesterday saying, implying that Mr. Dog was in the house. <laughs> Not. Yeah. I think that that's, that very well may be a nickname, but there is, it's as a, as a, as a, an illustrious quarterback once said, there's only one a B in the AFC North. That's right, right. Even though we on a schedule reveal, by the way, show that we were doing the irony. Come again. The irony what, what of that statement is that he was correct. There was only one A B in the AFC That's North. Right. The other was in the AFC West at the time. Already gone. So he was right, but also wrong. But also wrong. Which, in a way, the tenure that that yeah. nets. Yeah. That's um. Nice. So yeah. So the so his Twitter is at Snoop One. So he's leaning into it. Pro Football Reference has his nickname as Snoop. Wasn't there a guy like a um, there was a kid who played Marvin Florida Minnis? State named Marvin Snoop Minnis? I just had it, Marvin Minnis. You nailed it. Yeah. So he was a first team All American in 2000. Yes, Snoop um, Minnis. He was suspended 
for the national championship game against Oklahoma. They were going for back-to-back national titles. He was suspended for the national championship game because of academic reasons. He got a 0.0 GPA in the, in the football semester. And so they played for a national title without their first-team All-American wide receiver. And in the old, what's amazing is in those days, they didn't just make it right. Like, why didn't somebody at FSU just say, no, no, he, hey, he's, he's, he's got a 2.0. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. Let's go. It's one game. Right. Get him the grades. Like, who? It's like Isaiah who Ryder. She was fighting him, fighting the football program. I don't know. That can't go well. I miss Snoop Menace. I knew it's amazing. So, there was a time when I was aware of at least the most prominent in college football. More well, you would so have been at, at Emory at that point. So, that would have been, I mean, they were the kings of Southern football at that time, Florida yeah. State was. They played for the first three. BCS national Bobby titles. Bowden. Yeah, they played. That was your boy. So were you doing? Were, were you there then? No, I got there right after. Right after. Right after. Yeah. So you yeah. never covered Snoop Menace. I did not. And you never covered our next guest. No, I missed Jameis by quite a ways, actually. Yeah. So like the last, I think the last Chris quarterback I Winky? covered there. No, no, I Wank. Yeah, and then it was uh, a kid named Chris Ricks, who was a Southern California yeah. kid who uh-huh. fell really flat on his face. Yes, he did. And then they had a couple of big time recruits, so Drew Weatherford, Xavier Lee. Those both didn't work. Um, and then they finally hit with E.J. Manuel was the first one that, that hit. Or was it Ponder? Was it Christian Ponder? I can't, one of them, I can't remember which one was which. Two first-round picks that really <clears throat> didn't do much in the, uh, yeah, and then in the association. Yeah, yeah. So they, but they went like three straight first-round picks yeah. at quarterback. Um, like, kind of like Ohio State has, and I guess Ohio, Oklahoma did. Were they, were they all they? No, J- Jalen wasn't a one. He was a two. He was a two. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. So it's official. Uh, one year contract uh, on Jameis and on Huntley as well. So both those guys um, getting those formalities done uh, throughout the day. Um, did we I'm trying to remember what we did or did not do yesterday. But did we do we did Jerry the extension, right? We did. It was announced by Ian Rappaport at 246. That's right. It was. <laughs> that's right. He was floating around the building and we're like, oh, remember the satchel satchel satchel. Yeah. That guy looked great in a satchel, by the way, in the in the photo that we saw a little bit. It later. was a tremendous satchel. And yeah. it's something that I think is a beautiful thing when when you have a great satchel. I think Griff will be armed with a satchel in his future employment. Well, uh, considering, I mean, I, I envision Griff when he's working in our employ, uh, or perhaps in partnership, partnership. In, yeah. in partnership with, um, I in, I kind of envision him as a, f- a Mr. Fix-It. That's right. We have a problem. Yeah. He's going to he be like Rip. Solve a great, a great many problems in many ways. He's going to be like Rip. Yeah. He's going to be yeah. a rip. That's what I like. Yeah. There Are you go. up for that, Griff? Sure. He's in. Yeah. yeah. He's up for yeah. that. Yeah. And I think Uno's just going to be a bowl of enthusiasm. That's what I bring. Yeah. And then we'll have we'll have Peepaw Gibbe out on the driving range as our starter. Peepaw. He'll be out there starting, slipping in for a, a nice cold beer every once in a while, enjoying those uh, employee Mondays. Yeah. He will. He'll be big. He'll be. Big on, big on that, yeah, yeah, that's gonna be big. I think we've done it. What's up, sister? That's what we got a lot of that. Gonna be a lot of that. Yeah, that'll happen. Um, Jameis <laughs> is addressing the Cleveland media right now. He is allegedly he's coming in here next, so we'll see. That's the that's the word. That's the word on the street. That's the word. Yeah, uh, James Prochet back as well. Did we get a? Uh, I'm in. I'm curious. We didn't get a sweet bio for Jameis like we've gotten for some of our other guests, which was very well done, by the way. I think there's a pretty good chance we can handle it. I think so. Yeah. I think we're gonna be just fine. I think we'll be all right on that. Uh, I think we will be. Are we going to ask him about uh, the handoff heard around the world and how what a great joy we got? Can we maybe can we phrase it that we got such joy out of how angry he made Arthur right. Smith, so, who we are not fans of? Okay, I think that that w- I would say no because I think that that could be entrapment for him. Sure. And first impression of the new organization, I don't know that we want to entrap him. I just want to keep the. I just want to talk about Arthur Smith, really. I do too, but I my guess is he won't. Probably won't be crazy about it. Why don't we have? Why don't we have as a test? We'll have we'll have Uno ask him that question from in there. Yeah, behind the glass. Behind the glass. It's like when Robin Robin had to ask some tough questions sometimes on on Howard when she would really get after somebody maybe a little bit more than than Howard would. Yeah, she's behind the glass. Behind the glass. Yeah. Yeah. Is so he's talking right now. That's what's going on. Folks, this is in radio. He Stretch. is on his last question. Oh, keep last talking. question. And then I okay. believe keep he's talking. headed here. Give me, uh, give me two pieces of advice for tomorrow. 
Give me your two pieces of advice. <sighs> You've done it. Have your entertainment ready. Yeah. That. So if the if the if the Wi Fi is good enough on the American flight, then I'm just going to watch hoops. Okay. So I'll just pay for that, and we'll I'll watch hoops. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So then covered. And I've I've downloaded more movies than I can count for the boys. And make but sure there aren't enough movies to make it. Make sure everybody's got snacks. Yeah. <laughs> AKA Bootsy. Yeah. Well, make he's sure he's gonna, got snacks. This is heaven for him. He just gets to sit and watch movies and, and just have snacks. And just a lot of serenity now. Yeah, it's a long way. Serenity now. So it's going to be long. Are there two it's flights be arduous, before you even it's leave be worth the it. mainland? No, no, no. It's here, here to Phoenix, 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 Phoenix there. there. Oh, all right. Phoenix yeah. there. So that's, that's going to be a flight. Uh, it's got to be like eight. It's going to be a flight. Yeah, it's got to yeah, be like seven hours. Because it's out it's, there, brother. Well, it's six. Yeah, the six time zone thing is what really got me. It's like, oh, that's that's way out so there. So you're doing and Somebody two said days. it's halfway. When you get to the Pacific, you're not even halfway. Yeah. It's like yeah. it was at least a five plus from San Francisco or L.A. Yeah. Uh, when you get there, so two days at this Disney yeah. in Honolulu. Yeah. So that's the big island, right? Yeah. And then where? Maui. You, then you go to Maui. Yeah. So that's the way it's going to go. That'll be nice. That'll be where the – hopefully that's the sweet spot. Yeah. Yeah. She, it, it was all the blonde. I had, All I did was book flights. The rest of it was her. Normally I'm hands-on on this stuff. Like I'm picking hotels and – no, no, she did it. She did the hotels. She did the excursions. She did it. Oh, so what are what are the, some of the big excursions? We're doing the uh, Jurassic Park thing in Honolulu. Yeah, where they you get the whatever they whatever they do. We're doing that. They have the big doors, right? Yeah, yeah. It's where it was filmed. So yeah. we're doing that. Uh, we've got a boat. We've got a uh, catamaran boat sailboat thing for a day. Beautiful thing that we did. Um, uh, there's I don't know some other things. I'm really at this. Jesus, take the wheel. Go see ahead. what happens. Let's see what happens. I just did for summer. We did a, uh, a Reynolds Plantation, Lake Oconee. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, we got a house right on the water, rent a boat for a couple days. That's amazing. With the kids Have you been down there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, like, that's such an odd drop. But if you hadn't been there. To so I went to school in Atlanta. Of course. So yes. a couple of my friends <laughs> yes. had their parents who <laughs> no, were rather right. well-to-do yeah. had, had places houses that, at yeah. Reynolds Plantation at Great Waters. And so we'd go out there. Every That's now and then. awesome. It's, that place is great. It's unreal. It's so good. Oh, yeah. I'm very excited. Me too. I didn't even know that was an option. I'm so excited. Yeah. I didn't know I that you were looking into something that. to somewhere we could go that the kids haven't been somewhere. And then because it's here to Atlanta, that's such an easy flight. An we easy have so much flight. Delta, we can probably get that on miles. And, then and if anything goes wrong, we we're looking a billion at Lake, flights. We we're looking fun. at Lake Winnipesaukee. I think you win. I think you're winning. I think yeah. I think the fun irony of being at Lake Winnipesaukee would be very cool to unveil sure. and then to go there, and there would yeah. be moments. But I think for an overall enjoyment, you've won. Yeah, we have a – The houses there are ridiculous. The boats are awesome. I mean, yeah. you're just going to have a great time. Yeah. Yeah. Very, it's very good. It makes me yeah. happy. I'm very pleased. So that's fun. So, the, yeah. The, yeah, that's great. They'll, they'll enjoy that. Um, that was a joint – that was pretty amazing. Like, they basically just said, hey, let's just build this here. In the in the Georgia countryside, and then they did it. Did and it's when I was there, which would have been two thousand. It's so there are so many now, so many more resorts. There's so many more championship golf courses there. There's like a dozen. Yeah, it's a big lake. It's big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be fun. Very fun. Yeah, that's very good. Well, like it's crazy because it's kind of like the main coastline, so in and out that. From where we're going to be, if we wanted to drive to the Ritz, it would take 50 minutes. Yeah. But we could get to the Ritz uh, by boat. Yeah. In nothing. 12 minutes. You zip right over there. Yeah. 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 It's kind of like Ozarks. It is. That type of. Uh, it's kind of, yeah. That, that type it's of. It's an view. awesome lake. It's awesome. Yeah. Very good. Well, that's very nice. Yeah. Um, all right. So, Jameis will be coming up here momentarily. Yeah, I think he's. They're taking a picture, a couple of photos, the whole signing of the contract, and inking the deal. There you go. So I see nice. he's, he's put out a message. We've put it out on social. He put out a message to our fans. Um, so that is very good. Um, yeah, I mean he's he had he had one of the great college football careers of all time. Yes, as a redshirt freshman, he won the Heisman and they won the national championship. So that's. Pretty good. Um, he was one of those guys, too, when he was um, – I still had a lot of buddies, still do, have a lot of buddies down in Tallahassee. And he was one of those guys that that year he was redshirting, and it was either Ponder or a man, or a Manuel who was still there. I can't – whichever one. 
um, it was wait. This is the kid. Like you could hear the whispers. Like he's he's better. You can't pull the the guy who's starting now because he's going to be a first round pick. Yep. But this guy's better, and we just have to wait for him to get there. Um, so I remember even in the Heisman that that year, I had him on my radar right away because it, I had heard such good things about him, and then he was just sensational, and they had a, a, just a dominant season. The crazy thing is, he was a great pitcher too, right? Was he? A, yeah. Very yeah, good I think he played a little at of baseball Florida at State. FSU. He yeah. did, one hundred percent. Yeah. So he. Um, Ohio State almost played them in the national championship. That's the game Urban – they're undefeated. It was the first law – Urban won his first two years at Ohio State until the Big Ten championship game. He lost to Michigan State. Um, they got help. Michigan State stopped him on a fourth and nothing, and they tried running outside with Braxton. And he, the, the receiver tight end missed the block, and, and they got him for a tackle for loss. That was the first loss for Ohio State. That's the famous Urban eating the pizza picture. That's what that's from. But if they had won, they would have played Florida State in the Rose Bowl for the national title that year. Wow. Yeah. So that was um, – but that was it. But then, I mean, the, the sophomore – the crazy thing is sophomore year, they're undefeated all the way to the Rose Bowl when they lose to Oregon. And had they beat Oregon in the Rose Bowl, he would have played Ohio State for the national title. So they missed each other – Twice. Twice in, in back-to-back years. Um, but, no, sensational. And uh, I mean, 5,000 yards – in, in the pros, he can sling it deep. So it's uh, very, very comfortable in the shotgun set, which is something we're going to be in a lot more. He can throw forward. the ball. He like. can flat out spin it. Yes. Yeah, there's going to be, there's, he can spin it as good as anybody. He averaged 275 yards a game passing his first five years in the league when he was a, when, yeah, when he was a full time starter. 275 yards a game. Led the league 319 yards per game in 2019. Yeah, there, there he goes. Go. Big guy. He is. It looks good. Look at, Look at that coat. Looks, Look at that overcoat. I like that coat. That yeah. looks very, very good. So Jameis will join us here coming up next. We're uh, off and running. You listen to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
For a team of injury lawyers dedicated to every client every day, call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. Elk and Elk's proud partner of your Cleveland Browns. Well, I, I'm not sure that you and I ever thought this moment would actually happen. We have been wanting Jameis Winston to be part of the Cleveland Browns for many, many years. It's fact. Uh, big, big fans of yours. And so we're thrilled to have you here in studio, thrilled to have you as a member of the Cleveland Browns. With a tremendous overcoat, by the we way. We were just, just lamenting the gorgeous overcoat that you're in. Um, how did this come about? First of all, welcome. And yeah. then how did it come about for you to be a part of this organization? Well, it all started uh, when I became, when I knew I was going to become a free agent, and I just got so sick and tired of great weather and beaches <laughs> and music. And I said, like, what is the place? Let me challenge myself. Well, yeah, what is the, what is the place that I know that I can give my kids some snow, That's you it. know, for Christmas? Like, like, ain't ain't, ain't or no in more. March. Well, no, no, but honestly, <laughs> like, uh, no, it, it's it's truly a blessing uh, to be a part of the Dog Pound and to be on this radio show with y'all. But uh, I've always admired just the, the history of Cleveland and what it encompasses and to be able to be a, a part of that now uh, is, is amazing. What was kind of the sales pitch to you? Because in free agency, it's great. It's a, a mutual recruitment, right? What was kind of the sales pitch from the Browns to you about why this would be a great place well, for you? Well, when you, when you see how this team rallied together uh, after uh, significant injuries, you know, yes. on both sides of the ball, and, uh, and, and they were able to do it with, with four quarterbacks, you know, so one, you know that the roster uh, is one of the best rosters in, in the NFL. Uh, when you when you have a free agent signing that shocks the world, like Zadarius Smith is joining Miles Garrett, yeah. you know, last year I think that shocked everybody. You know, when you have a, a fierce defense that uh, know how to take the ball away sure. uh, and know how to stop the run, uh, that's enticing for for any quarterback. Uh, but but also uh, when you when you have the opportunity to impact and influence uh, a young quarterback who you have admired. Uh, for for from afar and have competed it against, uh, it, it it really was a a, a no brainer uh, for me. Uh, opposed to you know obviously looking for opportunities to start, sure. Uh, but but knowing uh, the head coach here, Kevin Stefanski, is able to to win with with you know with with with, uh, with his strat with his strategies uh, and with his um, uh, amazing ability to lead a team despite what they may grow through. Uh, you you have to admire that. You know, it's interesting. The, so when I was – we were talking off air, when you were down – like, that's a small world, that southern quarterback world. And so you coming out of Alabama, going to Florida State, Deshaun coming out of Georgia, going to Clemson. And you guys didn't intersect in college, right? He came just slightly – you're done in 14, and then he's in in 15, yeah. I think, at Clemson. But it was a – I remember even talking about it in the greater college football world. Like it was a passing of the guard from – Best quarterback college football, Jameis, to Deshaun. Was, mm. He was next. He had next. Well, well it, so, started, it started with Cam Newton. Well, yeah, way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cam yeah, even before yeah, you, yeah, for no sure. Doubt. But, like, was there a um, – how aware have you been of his career throughout yours? And I'm sure he emulated you gr wanting – you know, having you being a couple years older. Yeah, well, I, I think his intangibles – um, was was all it always stood out because his ability to to make plays and uh, being from the state of Alabama, uh, him winning the national championship with Cle with Cleveland in Tampa, mm -hmm. uh, you know obviously all the, the the excitement that was going on when the college football playoff had came to Tampa, I was able to to uh, have a few appearances and, and talk about that, uh, and, and he didn't win, he didn't even win the Heisman that year, which mm -hmm. uh, I, I I thought that he he he, he was definitely. Uh, could have, could have. So uh, him seeing him beat Alabama uh, in the national championship stage uh, was prolific, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because uh, you know we we beat Auburn, mm -hmm. but just being in that Southern Ram, we know for so long that Alabama was king. Yep. So I think when he did that, he definitely got his street cred from everybody <laughs> around. Uh, so uh, I, I'm, I'm just I'm just proud of him, and I'm, I'm happy to get to work with him. And I know that you've talked to him since since you've signed. And I remember right when it was announced that you had signed, to give a quote to Josina about how you were going to help him be the best version of himself. How's kind of those conversations gone? I'm sure he's got to be thrilled as well. And we've yeah. got to know him. A great guy. Yeah, well, uh, I'm obviously right now the most important thing is, is him getting back and, and, getting, and yep. getting recovered. Uh, so I know he's passionately pursuing that right now. Uh, but we, we will be connecting over the course of the next two weeks. Um, but, I, but I think – in terms of just uh, growth, 
and learning from your experiences, uh, I have played every role that you can play as an NFL quarterback uh, in this league, up to in just nine years in the league. So just me being, being able to bring that and being able to, to bring a certain energy around him and be willing to serve him and give him something that he probably hasn't gotten. I know uh, uh, I'm, I'm cool with Jacoby Brissett, and I know that they, Great they, they got a chance to, to work doing that, and that was a tough season. But uh, I'm just excited to get in the room with him uh, see how he worked. Like it, it's different when you see someone hand in hand. You can hear, you know, about what people do. Obviously, you can see on TV. But when you get a chance to connect with somebody and be in it with them, uh, you, you can do amazing things together. Yes, yeah, uh, certain. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, kind of along that line. You know, we're moving from what had been kind of an under center, a lot of you know, marriage of the run and pass, the play action, the keeper game, all of that, to maybe more of a shotgun style offense now with Ken Dorsey that's something I know that you've been very comfortable with your entire career how how important or how influential me was that factor as well saying this is not only a chance to work with you know Deshaun not only a chance to be with a great roster that can win knowing that if you get an opportunity to play you're going to be able to win but also having an offense that probably is going to suit what you like to do pretty well yeah well you know one thing I like to do is uh is Hand the ball off to Nick Chubb and watch him that get is very, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's you know, 150 uh, a game. And I think you build an offense based off that. You know, when you when you look at how the, the Cleveland Browns have ascended to being one of the top teams uh, in the NFL, it's because of their fronts, mm-hmm. right? A great offensive line. Yep. Like you think about the, the injuries that we had on the offensive line last year, and we still were able to overcome that and still have, you know, a, 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 a dominant rusher who, who was new, new to the team, you know, uh, despite uh, Nick being hurt. And I know he's recovering his, his, his tail off the injuries that Deshaun had. You know, and you've been you seeing this offense evolved around PJ Walker, around uh, what, what was the Dorian DTR, uh, DTR, DTR, DTR yeah. and seeing the just the 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 excitement that Joe Flacco was able to come him win and come back Player of the Year of what throwing bombs uh, off seven games, yep. yeah, you know, you know, and and I think that just shows what one. Uh, the men and women that are in this building are doing something right. Uh, and two, when you think about offense, like everybody wants to pass in this league, but every defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator knows it starts it starts with the run and it finishes with stopping the run. Yeah. So the ability that this team has to run the football is only going to open up so many more opportunities with the different things you can do out of the gun, the different play actions that you can create, the different uh, gimmicks and trick plays that you can get off of this new wave of, of shotgun offense. You know, it's funny. You're as 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 it's all of these things are so cool, but there are so many connections. As as we, we were talking about you and Deshaun, and you think about you know Jerry Judy, you think about Amari. I mean, you and Amari same this, yeah. age, Alabama, Alabama, another one. Um, Elijah, Elijah Moore, Miss, Nick Chubb. I mean, like we Georgia. have so many big state U Southern Chief dudes. Florida, the U. Chief went to you. Yeah. I mean, we have so many of those guys um, that that are on this team, and I. The one thing I know that AB likes about it is, is if you if you played at one of those places and you're from that part of the the country, you understand what football is all about at the mm-hmm. very highest level. And I think you're going to find that when you get here in the fall, that these people view it the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, that there is a the way that there is a big game on campus in Tallahassee, and the way that that feels mm-hmm. on a Saturday morning. That's the same thing you're going to find here on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. And I think the guys thrive in it. I really do. Have you have you picked up on the connection between all of that stuff in terms of this organization and the the big state U Southern connection? Yeah, uh, a- a- absolutely. Um, I-, I just know one thing about. Let's just talk about the fan base. Like when uh, we we came here. Uh, Two years ago, a year ago, uh, and played in you know one of the coldest games. I was going to thank history. you for not making sh- that you say I'm not going there because that that was for here even that was insane. You know, like that was not normal. But there were people in the stands <laughs> without shirts. You, you know, and like and, and obviously that's that's odd and crazy when you yeah. think about that. <laughs> yes, like, it is. Obviously, you got to think about your health, but <laughs> but just think about the commitment. And, um, and honestly, you know, and I, I and I know I'm not with New Orleans anymore, but that's something that I really admired about that that city in New Orleans is just the fans were always involved. And when you think about the the Cleveland Browns, you think about the dog pound, yeah. you know. So these fans, they're what make things go. Like that's, they're the reason that we all have a job because these people, their livelihood is watching the Browns play football. Yep. So uh, you know, I, I'm very grateful to to be a part of a of an organization in a society that encompasses you know that that grit iron that hard nose uh and, and, and really increase they they yeah. know they, they know that we're trying to make everybody better we, we all feed off each other yeah there's no doubt you've said it many times when you guys who come from the big schools like yeah. you did this is as close as you'll get to that collegiate atmosphere in terms of really the way is. the browns yeah. fans are and i joked with joe flacco 
probably after maybe a second game, I go, you're going to end up being more popular here than you were ever in Baltimore. And he's like, yeah, okay. And after we clinched against the Jets, he was like, you were right. He's like, it's, <laughs> my family's like, this is crazy. It's just a great place to play football. That's what they, that's what they do here, you know? And I know that you appreciate that. It's the, it's the love for football. You know, uh, yeah. and just go back to the like down the south. Like, you know, we have football. That's what you know, it, like we don't have hoops. You know, because like obviously the impact that LeBron James has made on this community is amazing. Uh, but Ohio even has good basketball. Mm -hmm. Like Alabama, we don't have you know we don't have the best basketball, but we have a lot of superstar players that come out. Sure. Uh, but the love of football is something that I I feel like I attract to, mm -hmm. and I know that this city really loves football, and uh, and that's why uh, I know that I'm really gonna love this city. It's gonna be fun, man. We're we're excited. So one of the things I always ask the people when they come in yeah. is, what's something you just want Browns fans to know about you? It doesn't have to be about your football. Doesn't have to be about your work. Just anything in general that when they see Jameis Winston out there, you love. This is what I want you to think. Yeah, when when you see me on the street, just know that I'm a man of faith, and I'm looking to encourage and inspire anybody that I'm around. You know, uh, one of my favorite athletes of all time is uh, Muhammad Ali, and him being able to just be be approachable to anybody that came around. I always wanted to make it a, a, a great experience. Now, when, when I'm eating dinner with my family, I will always respect my family first. But uh, I got so much respect because I know it's a privilege to have this, this platform and get a chance to serve the community the way that I do uh, with a sport that I love. So just know I'm a man of faith. I'm a man of God, of Christ. And I know uh, that I'm here to inspire and increase uh, the people uh, of the next generation and even you if you come up and we'll take I'm in we're, we're in we're in well this is a long That's time right. coming for us yes. we've been rooting for you to be here for a very long time it was great having you here in studio congratulations yes. on being a Cleveland Brown welcome to town look forward to seeing it uh, on the field here shortly Jameis Winston in studio you're listening to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland
Let me ask you something, kids. You tired about worrying about your roofing or siding? Get peace of mind by upgrading right now with Renew Home Exteriors. The Renew Home Exteriors lifetime warranty on roofing and siding products offers durability and protection that you can trust. And the best part, with no money down and no payments or interest for 24 months, improving your home has never been easier. Mention ESPN, receive an exclusive $2,000 off your upgrade. Enjoy the peace of mind with a new roof or siding. Renew Home Exteriors, superior products, and they mean that. And superior service, they mean that as well. Visit RenewEstimate.com and book today. Um, That was great. It was great to have Jameis in here. Um, Fantastic. It was as good as I had hoped it would be when we decided we wanted He's him full to of join life, us. man. Yes, he, he is. He's full of is. life. He's full of joy. And, um, you know, he – it doesn't you don't, doesn't hit you until you start talking to him and then you're transported back to a decade ago and you say to yourself, my God, like in, in college, he was – Deshaun was the heir apparent in Southern yes. quarterbacks to Jameis. Yes. Jameis correctly brought up Cam – uh, who preceded him, um, but like it was that was it. It was it was Jameis to Deshaun. That was the the passing of the torch, um, and now the two of them working together. And I I think his you could tell like just listening to him talk, the enthusiasm that he has, he is going to be a tremendous asset for Deshaun Watson in that room. Yes, yes, and I think that he's somebody that has good and bad walked some of the same paths that Deshaun's walked and I think they'll yeah. be able to relate uh, over that how they've overcome those things uh, and be working forward towards a common goal and yeah he's still young man like James is still young very 29 years old he certainly yeah. has every ability to throw the football we know that led league in yeah. passing I mean it's I, I like it I think that he is going to be really a positive addition to that locker room. And I think a lot of people were uh, initially concerned given some of the the things in, in Jameis's past, but anybody who's kind of looked into it has seen how he's turned his life around, especially New Orleans was so involved in the community there. He talked, he talked about being a man of faith and really yeah. being involved within the church community and also in the community at large in New Orleans. And they don't, they can't say enough good things about him no. in his time down there. No, no, not at all. Um, and, you know, the other thing to remember is, is that, the things that Jameis does well are the same things that Joe Flacco did well. Jameis has a big arm, and he will take the top off of any defense. And oh, if yeah. he is thrust into play or thrust into play for a considerable amount of time, he's done it. He's a 5,000-yard passer in this league. Um, yes. So that that fits with our skill. The one thing that people missed, I think, in the initial Jameis Flacco thing was – the fact that Jameis is out of the gun and is comfortable and has lived out of the gun for the majority That's of his right. career. And while Joe fit with what we did offensively last year, it's going to be different. It's different. It's and be different. as we've said many times with, with Ken Dorsey coming in. So that was very, very cool uh, to have, to have Jameis in here. Uh, good job. Give on that. Uh, your, your hot topics today are presented by vivid seats, the official fan experience partner of your Cleveland Browns. Um, all right. So, uh, around the league we go. The Jets signed former Chargers wide receiver Mike Williams to a one-year deal worth 15. That feels like a better one-year, 15 million dollar deal than some of the others that have been handed out recently. Uh, that's a you talk about now. Brees Hall, Aaron Rodgers, Garrett Wilson, and Mike Williams. Yeah, that's pretty good. Where are they picking? That's pretty good. Uh, the Jets. Let's see. Uno, you got that at the ready? Not at the ready, no. I was just looking. Because it's a loaded wide receiver class as yes. well. Um, all right, I'm pulling it up right now. They're in the top 15. They're in the top 10 for sure, I believe. All right, the Jets are picking 10th. 10th. So um, that gets into the Roma Dunzier. If he Potentially, gets past if he gets past Chicago, provided they don't go that way, that gets you into the um, the other receiver from LSU. Um, I was going back and forth with Dane, trying to uh, talk to him about something in the next month, and and we were talking a little bit about the receivers. And while the top three are just off the charts, the next group, and it's you know people have different opinions on Neighbors versus Harrison, um, for example, but the next group is huge. It's a huge oh group of good like. If you need a receiver in the first round and the second round, plenty to go around. Plenty to, and of all different types, yes. body types, speed, weapons, all of it, lot weapons, of weapons their weapons, slot guys. You know, for them, the guy, Uno, who's the guy that you love? 
<clears throat> Debo Samuel. Malachi Corley. Yeah, maybe they, you snake him in the second round, so now you have a Debo Samuel running around with a Williams and a Wilson outside. And yeah. No thanks. No thanks? Well, I don't want From him to be our perspective. a Jet. Sure. <laughs> Gets to go to the NFC. But that feels like, here. to me, that feels like a pretty good match. Yeah. Um, also around the league, the Bengals signing veteran offensive tackle Trent Brown to a one-year contract. It's good, good signing. Good signing for them. This is scary. Did you see this? The Chase Young story? So no. Breer had this this morning. So Chase Young is set to undergo neck surgery. Uh, the NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport reported, uh, added that if all goes well with Young's recovery, he should be able to ready for the start of the 24 season. But this is the part that's scary. This is from Breer. Uh, scans on the neck made it tough to find a suitor. No one would clear him on his physical. The condition was initially found after he had a stinger versus the Browns in the preseason. Uh, went on to say the neck condition was a factor in his trade market last October. The Bears weren't comfortable with the scans. The 49ers were. That is dangerous stuff. Yeah. Talk about neck and neck surgery. Yeah. That's pretty heavy. That's very heavy. Um, yeah, you. he said it just feels like so snake bitten by injury. Yeah, bad luck. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be a Ram. I like 4. that. 4.5 million bucks. He's got a two-game suspension, though, right? Did yep. I see that? Could be more. The ball will not come out of his hand any more differently than Matt Stafford's if they try. No, <laughs> that's one of those ones where the brains are probably operating on the same frequency, but the bodies are not. Yes, you know. Jimmy Grapes is very good though at attacking the middle of the field. Yeah, he'll run. He'll run that offense very, very well. <clears throat> yeah. Plus, for him, he's made a lot of cash. L.A. Nice place yes. to spend your season. Yes. Um, handsome fellow. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, Did you see? Th- this is how we we ended up in silly season. Uh, RG three saying Caleb Williams should refuse to play for the Bears and pull an Eli Manning. Why is it just because they've? I I saw this. Did you hear? Did you listen to Imuno? I did not okay. listen to it. I so, only saw the article. Yeah. Okay. So I think the the theory is is that Chicago did Justin Fields really wrong and they failed at quarterbacks. I don't know their whole Forever. history. Um, so don't go to a quarterback graveyard. I don't know if it touches on the stuff that Deion Sanders said about playing in cold weather. Like, don't play in that if you don't have to. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure if it, if they touched on that part of it as well. Um, there is no doubt that playing in here, here Buffalo, Green Bay, Chicago, it's a different. It's different. Yeah. Even New England Pittsburgh probably a, a little degree. bit. But do they get the whippy wind like we do though? Off that stadium can because that one side's yeah. lower than the other and it's right on the river. Okay. So they but they're kind of down. So that, you know we're pretty exposed. Very exposed. Chicago is really exposed. Chicago needs lake. a dome. Buffalo needs a dome. We, we need, need a, a dome. dome. All well, of them. Yeah. How about it? Well, how about it? Uh, Green Bay, probably. The wind's got to be brutal there, too. Yeah, it was miserable on that Christmas game that I was at. Miserable. Yeah. Adorable, Kenny. It was adorable, Kenny. Yeah. Um, I, I don't I, – the Mannings did it. Do you think the Mannings would do it now? Like, if Arch Manning is a dude – do you think they would pull that now Doesn't seem in like today's it. day and age? Like they, they that when they did that with Eli, that's oh three. At that point, it, the only way that you even knew it happened is if you hurt and like Mort there protected them. Social media there weren't like people this. crushing it. No, there wasn't PTI. No, there weren't people arguing about it. Now no. maybe like Mike and the Mad Dog were arguing about it in New York on WFAN, but it wasn't something where everybody was seeing it. And would have been it would be twenty four seven. It would be twenty four seven now. If Arch Manning said, or if Caleb Williams said, "Yeah, I'm not going to play there. I'm, I'm going to, I don't want to play there." Yes. And by the way, like of the three spots, they're all pretty brutal. The Bears are easily the best landing spot in terms of the talent by a thousand. Yeah. But like them, New England and Washington. Yes. Bears by a mile. Bears. Yes. The Bears. Yeah. I. Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, Cole S- Komet, DeAndre Swift, and a division that is good. Yeah. No doubt, but. You're in a conference that feels wide open. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Richard Deitch with this. Red Zone is coming to the Olympics. Scott Hansen, Andrew Siciliano. Our guy Andrew Siciliano is yeah. in, involved in this. He's yep. the host of Peacock's Gold Zone Whip Around Show, which will live stream on Peacock during the NBC Universal coverage of the Paris Olympics. What's going to be the time difference on that? Like, how much... That's like four hours. Is it five to Paris? Paris? Probably five, six. Five or six? Yeah. So probably about the same as where I'm going. Yep. Um, so, like, the stuff that's happening in prime time over there will happen in the middle of the – so it'll be like two. Champions League soccer. Yeah, two in the afternoon. When that, like yep. two, two or three o'clock in the afternoon is when that stuff will Absolutely. arrive. Yeah. 
Um, so there you go. Uh, ESPN and college football have reached a, a media agreement that will ensure ESPN will continue as exclusive worldwide rights holder in college football's premier postseason event through 2031 and 2032. It's $1.3 billion a year on this is the, are the, the figures of it. The, Ace, I'm sorry, the SEC and the Big Ten are getting 58% of the money. The, uh, the ACC and the Big 12 are going to get 20% or thereabouts. No, less than. Uh, about 10% or thereabouts. And then it's about 8% for everybody else is the way it's going to go. So the gaps are just Growing. getting bigger and bigger. and They're bigger. becoming massive. <clears throat> yeah, and they're nice. You could, that's why, you know, James Alma, Alma Mater, Florida State, Deshaun's Clemson, they both have filed a lawsuit against the ACC because yeah. it's untenable. But at the same time, there's no way out. Those two schools, there's no landing spot for either one of them. And there really is no right answer. They just hitch their wagon to the wrong horse. It's just – it's kind of that simple. Um, but, yeah, the, the gap will just get – Bigger and bigger and bigger yeah. uh, going forward um, with that. Hey, did you see the uh, breakdown of – you give me hell all the time because I still have the cable. The breakdown of Nielsen in terms of where we get our entertainment still in this country? No. So, like, the most now is streaming. Yep. But it's like 36% is streaming. Um, cable is around 30%. Okay. Over the air is around 24%. So, over the air and cable are still 50% – are getting it that way. Wait, uh, like antenna. 24%? Yeah. 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 That. Yeah, it's, 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 it's times we, we're just, yeah, we're a little out of touch with how it's shaken out, but that's what it is. So it's 54%. Streaming was 36. Um, the streaming part then was broke down in terms of where you're streaming, where the streaming's coming from. So number one, to no surprise, was YouTube TV. That was like 9.6 of the 30 some percent. Number two was Netflix which was around eight, somewhere in there. And then it was a drop to under three, and it was Amazon, and it was um, Net, uh, Hulu were under 3%. And then it was a dip to like... Where's Max? Like 1.6. But they're double dipping, too. Max double dips because it gets its own... It gets the, the cable, t- too, still, because you're still getting the premium on the cable. Yes. So of those people, the... Th- 30 some percent that still have are still getting you're right have right. hbo they're still they're a great many of those are probably paying 15 bucks a month for hbo so they're 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 dual streaming so i think they're more than fine but like peacock paramount all the rest of those apple tv had so few subscribers that it was it didn't even register it was under a million or under one percent i'm sorry under one percent of the of the pie that's wild was apple tv so it's changing, but that's why when we say, like, what made me think of this was this, this story because ESPN and the college football, they're going to have the ability to sublease the games out, so they'll be able to sell them to CBS and Fox and whoever they want. But in addition to that, the national championship game goes to ABC in 2026, 27. So while there are a great many people who are streaming or YouTube TV, there's still a ton of people that are getting it and watching it on ABC. And we still see that. When we see an NFL game on network – Versus cable, the network still wins. Totally. By a pretty wide margin. Totally. So it's still there, even though it's trending the other way, it's still there. It's yeah. still viable. Of course. Yeah. All right, there you go. That's great. Good we'll job. whip it. We'll whip it. Coming up next, we'll whip it good. Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
I want you to picture this. Please. It is a Paint sunny, a it is a sunny, sun-kissed Friday afternoon in September. You could argue the most glorious month of the year in Ohio. You could argue. You're saying to yourself, it's a Friday night. Oh, baby. And I don't have anything to do. You do now. The reason you don't on this vision into your future is because you didn't pay damn attention to what I'm about to say. Lock in. Lock in. It's Billy Joel. It's Rod Stewart. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's Billy Joel and Rod Stewart, and it's one night only. <laughs> you look the sweep. Yeah. Z gives it for those not on the stream. He gives a sweep yeah. and then a one, and that's it. So, your Friday night will be fulfilled in September. Th- uh, of Might be the best Friday night of your life. Can't say it isn't. Well, no, you, and it, it, it's only going to happen once, so we know that part too. One night only. It's one night only. You get the tickets now. Um, so you get it now, so you're not alone and not know what to do with yourself on that Friday in September. You visit clevelandbrownstadium.com slash Billy and Rod 2024. Billy and Rod 2024. Billy, Rod, one night. Go. One night. Only. One light only. That's it. That's there it. There you go. One night only. Uh, do we have some news here, Gibbe? Give it. Give it. Sure. You guys had it, too. Hold on. Well, no, I, I can't find it. I can't find the tweet. All right, here we go. Uh, from Jordan Schultz of the Bleacher Report. Uh, free agent running back Deontay Foreman signing with the Browns. Sources tell the Bleacher Report. He is a load. So this would be the replacement for Kareem Hunt in that short yardage situation. It also makes you wonder, given you know what Jerome Ford does, what Pierre Strong does, what Naheem Hines does, you know, are we not – We maybe we just don't know when Nick Chubb's going to be there. Deonta Foreman is six foot, 235 pounds. He is excellent in short yardage situations. And you look at his career, this is what I think is interesting. Ten times in his career, he's received 20 – actually, 11 times in his career, he's received 19 or more carries in a game. Seven of those 11, he's rushed for 100 yards. Yeah. So he is a bruiser. He gets better as he wears teams down. Uh, He was very productive in Carolina, very productive in Tennessee at times. Um, In those those games, 11 games, nine of them, he's had at least 80 yards. In those 11 games where he's received at least 19 carries, he has scored seven touchdowns. I mean, Deontay Foreman is a legitimate, productive bull, like hammer. Yeah. In the National Football League, and I think that's a good signing. That that makes it, it makes me wonder: Is Nick Chubb opening the season on the pup? Well, because you're not carrying five running backs. No, and I, you know, like let's have a little common sense with this. It was a catastrophic knee injury to Nick Chubb that yes. took not one but two two surgeries surgeries to make right, and then from that comes a rigorous rehab yes that long road that Nick Chubb is going to attack with the passion of a thousand sons but at the same time it still is what it is that feels very passionate it feels quite passionate it's a very bright <laughs> so but the, the the thing is is like it's finite yeah there's going to be amount of time that it takes and the other thing with with Chubb is like don't rush it no come back once right no there's no hurry here so this allows for breathing room I mean, this isn't scores. It's just connecting the dots. Yeah. It feels like to me that this would, I think I'll say, the, I'll use the word unfortunately, I think it may close the book on a potential Kareem Hunt return to the Browns in 2024. He was great last year. He was. You knew that he was, his skill set had evolved into something very, rather specific, but he was very good at that specific at, skill. At Short yardage. But getting you three yards. He got no it. No matter what. No matter what. He was no getting you three yards. He was going to lower, and he was going to get it. And he will. He's had a career high in rushing touchdowns. I mean, he year. is. Yeah. His. The way that he is beloved here. Yeah. You know, hometown kid. And then this season, it was so nice for it to end. If, if this it did, I think you're right. Um, if, if that was it, then, God, that was a great way for it to be it. Yeah, and certainly better than it was the the previous time when you thought it was it. So that was, um, so that's good. So there that's, you go. Deontay your... Foreman can play. This is oh yeah, he is. Yeah. He's a load. He is a, he is very much 
a load. And I think, like I said, I think he fits that. He'll be that hammer. But he's a guy that you have leads in the fourth quarter. He'll be able to run teams down. Look at high tops today. Look is at he him. in hot? Look oh, at he him. Is. Yeah, he's got some. I mean, no big deal. No big deal. Just tournament. a Wednesday. It's tournament. Just a Wednesday. It's tournament time, baby. Just a Wednesday. You seen him get a Stop flick? It. Has he got yes. a nice flick? Stop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> little gooseneck. Yeah, a little gooseneck. I like it. How I what like was it. your? I, I always had like I was like that. I was always like that. Yeah, I was these two together. Oh, so man. you were pointer and yeah, yeah. I was I was middle too, like that. Oh baby. Yeah. They did teach some people the gooseneck and they'd go like that. I don't understand. That. Yeah, I never did all that. No, I just yeah. How it would go? Yeah. Mm mm mm. Pure as the driven snow. Yep. Um. All right, let's whip it. Do 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 do. Mm-hmm. Hit it, Paulus. Are you guys hearing it? Oh yeah. Okay, good. I'm not. I don't know why we're not hearing it in our side. Yeah, we got it. We're not hearing. It. Probably operator error on your guys's end. Probably. It feels that way. Fine. Hate to yeah, say we it, got though. it. We got it. If you All only right. had a light to say when you could hear things and you could speak, you why would you need no, that? A light is not an option in that situation, Bo. Well, you never know. Could you have an audio light too? I bet there's studios that come with you audio get a lights. A little cocky with 51 minutes left in your work week. <laughs> Listen, if you think tomorrow's <laughs> yeah. a vacation, you got another thing coming. I don't. I did not want to do this. Tell you right Let's now, remember. Let me just. I'm going just against my will. Right now, I don't. Not sure the next 10 days are going to be exactly a walk in the park for you. I think that once I get to the second location, now we're living. Yeah. Right. That's right. But it's going to be like survival for the first 48. First, probably 72 hours, it'll be survival, and then it'll be, you know, smooth sailing, Are hopefully. Are you guys renting a vehicle? Yeah, one on both of each island. Gotcha. Yeah, because we got to we got to do, I don't know, do some Jurassic Park thing, and then I got some other thing I got to do in Maui. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Again, Jesus take the wheel. The blonde took it. She's doing what she's doing. It's I'm fine. sure she's going to crush it. The dog going in, is the dog already oh in? Oh, my God. Yeah, what's oh, happening with the buddy This was here? a big problem last time. You what do you have? At, you need to look at your phone. You need to look at your phone. That's what you need to do. Yeah, what's going on with Buddy oh, Garrett God. while you multitask? What has he done? Oh, my word. Oh, he's got a lot going on. It's just an audacious collection. <laughs> yes. By the way, that's a heck of a sweet-looking bar. It is. Yeah, that's a lo- Oh, boy, look at all those little guys. Oh, my gosh. All right. Mm, good, to, it's good to be the king. Yes, it is. It is good to be the king. Jeez, so much. I think I think we could maybe see, he might have more in that collection than in his sneaker collection. Uh, it's in play. It's in play. It's a lot. It's a lot of spirit. Yeah, I don't think he should be able to do that while we're on the air because that's going to make lead to a hell of a distraction. Yes, uh, buddy, <laughs> buddy Garrity. Today, my wife just texted me about it. it's funny. So you say she dropped him off today. Um, I'm my pitch to her was it'll be better because he was just there a month ago and so there'll be some familiarity with yep. it. Um, dude, you, it was like sending a kid to boarding school. The amount of trinkets and toys and treats that he goes with. Oh yeah, I'm sure. He's like it's just gonna do everything. Smoke I can. bones with bone marrow, and we've got frozen kongs, and we've got the honestly the bone marrow stuff. They, I almost want to dig into them. They, they smell so damn. Oh good. man. Um. So yeah, I you know. But it, you know, what are you going to do? That's what you do. I, I understand that. Yeah. You understand that. Yeah. Does she understand that? Well, yet? I think she just texted me about it. She coming around on it? No. No. All right. AD will be home in two oh, months. Oh, she said he was much calmer. Good. Yeah. She said, I didn't cry. I feel good. Good job, honey. All right. Good job. There good we job. go. We're yeah. turning the corner. So he Strong was much calmer this time. Cry. Yeah. So there you go. He was good. Good job. Yeah, that's a win. I that's went win. out and achieved anyway. <laughs> Such an Time incredible. for the CBD. He's win. broke. <laughs> he was Wasn't he? was broke. It was, a, it was a fraud. It was all a fraud. He was yeah. a fraudster. Yeah. By the way, I just zoomed in on some of these things. Is he running like a? Is he running a distribution center? Well, the, it's the sheer. Maybe he's working the system. <laughs> he might be working. Baby, this. that's a great drop out of you. That's great. That is, there's a small audience that un- appreciates the beauty of that. It's Nobody small. More than me. But, like, that is a great job out of getting That's a get right out of jail free card with me. That's it. I wouldn't even give you That grief. was, yeah, that is. Not that that's Tee it high goes. and let it fly right there, Gibbe. Yeah. You're um, welcome. I would Touch say. Touch them all. 
Um, I'm going to say, let's see what he's got here. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it is a, a specific, um, it's the af- affinity for a certain. I'm talking about the quantity of each. Distillery. And then like the amount. Yeah. Yeah. The amounts are s- quite staggering. Um, yeah. Like some of that stuff you don't, you can't get a bottle, let alone 12. 12. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a... Yeah. Yeah. That is that is something just... It's something you don't see very often. I'm going to say champagne wishes and caviar dreams. He's got, like, sneaker like wishes and bourbon dreams. I'm going to have to have a conversation with top men about texting photos in yeah. the middle of the show. Not, not in the middle of the show. Ray's gone bye-bye, Egon. What do you got? <laughs> what do you mean? I'm, I'm still... I'm, I'm talking. Yeah, but it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It, it's a hard thing to concentrate. Yeah, there's I'm a sure. lot of there's so many things you want to look at. Yes, and you want to make sure you're every time it all you look, you see something you new. Yeah, yeah. All right. Question number one on this week's see? edition: the whip of the CBD whip. One week into free agency, which wide receiver ended up in the best spot? Keenan Allen with the Bears, Mike Williams with the Jets, Zagura. Mike Williams with the Jets. Let's play with Aaron Rodgers, who knows how to use a big bodied fast receiver we sure Aaron Rodgers is playing well that he's you know, not he's not the vice president anymore he's so. not but I, he's decision. not gonna get that but I I do think like I mean I don't know like those guys in Nico Collins did okay with Stroud I mean he blew up last year yeah. yeah so like you can you can spin it the safer bet is obviously I'm saying that Rogers, Nico but. is Nico was like the one yes Tank Dell was good too, but I mean he was like the one. Yes. Like there's DJ Moore there as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And not say that there isn't Garrett Wilson, but I would say if you're gonna be the two, I'd rather be with I feel like with Aaron Rodgers is gonna No, it's the right one. I was just looking at think, thinking if there was more I like of a it. counter. No, no. Yeah. Question number two, taking the Browns out of this, based on the free agent move so far, which AFC North huh. team is the most improved? Well, not talking about injury, it's Pittsburgh. There's no doubt. They had Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph, and now they have Russell Wilson, and they have Justin Fields. Don't remind me. They have I mean, Patrick I, Queen at linebacker, who you know he's going to kill it. Ugh, I never had, a, like, it, oh, Kenny Pickett's being traded, not in the stomach, gross, he's going to be a sealer. A sealer. I mean, like. Yeah, in, within 24 hours. Where's the rest of the league? Asleep at the wheel? I don't know. I guess he rejected teams, and they, they said, you get to pick. It's a great pick for him, by the way. So he was... He was at Georgia. Yes. Transferred to Ohio State. Yes. He was Georgia one year. So would he know Pickens? Would he have been there with Pickens? Who knows where it's a good question. Either either yes or just missed. Okay. I think just missed. Because Pickens came out after his junior year. He's in year three. Yeah. Justin's in year four. Yeah. So I think they would have missed just by a missed. year. That's what I think. So he could have been the interesting. Okay. So he was, but he would probably know what they thought of him for sure. So the only reason that he he bounced from Georgia because his freshman year they played Jake from from, <laughs> and they won the national title with Jake from. Yes. So they were gonna play with. Or did they play for it with Fromm? Did Bennett win two? No, Stetson Bennett won two. He did. They've won two. Georgia. Or have they won three? The COVID year always screws me up. LSU won in 19. Clemson won in 18. LSU 19. Ohio State played Alabama in 20. 2021 would have been Georgia. 2022 would have been Georgia. 2023 was Michigan. 2019 so no. led Georgia to the SEC championship where they lost to LSU. Finished yes. his college career with a victory over Baylor in the Sugar Bowl in 18. They uh, lost in the national championship game to Alabama on the walk-off. This is Albie with losses to Alabama in the SEC championship game and Texas in the Sugar Bowl in 18. In 18? Yeah, so maybe. So seven. So 18's got to be Trevor Lawrence. 20, Trevor Lawrence left. in 80? He left 18. in 20. Deshaun won it in 16. Yeah. 17 is... Is the is that the walk off with Tua? So January eighth, twenty eighteen, Alabama twenty six, Georgia twenty three. That's the walk off. So the that's the seventeen season. Yep. 
The yeah, so that's season, two at a that's two at a Devonta Smith. Yep. walks it off. 18 season was Clemson over Alabama. 44 that's Trevor 16. out yep. in San Francisco. Then 19 is Burrow. 20 is a Mac Jones. 21 is Georgia. 22 is Georgia, and 23 is Michigan. Yeah. Okay. So Fields would have been at Georgia in 19. He was there in 18, not with Pickens. You're right. 18. 19 was his freshman year at Ohio State. They lost to Clemson in the national semifinal. 20, they played for the national yep. title in they COVID. They played for the his, national title his, in the COVID His year. red shirt, his sophomore red shirt. He played two years at Ohio State. Okay. All right, 18. All right, now we got it. All right, question number three. Speaking of Justin Fields and the Squealers, fact or fiction, Justin Fields will start more than six games for the Steelers this coming season. I'll say fact. I think he could win the what job. If, what if, right. what, well, I think so, too. What if, we do, um, what if we do this caveat to it? Justin Fields will start six games with the Steelers this season, regardless of an injury to Russell Wilson. Fact. You still think? I still think. I don't know if I'm agreeing. By the way, Bennett won 22-23. Man, how about that? What's that? Stetson Bennett, 22-23. and 23. Yeah, won it just... After starting as a backup to JT Daniels in 22, he wouldn't even start the season as a starter. He's a walk-on, dude. He was, he was at Georgia. In, in they 17. Said, he was a walk-on. They said, get gone. We don't need you. So he went to small school. J- Jones then College. Then came back. Yep. He came back after Je- after Fields left. He came back to back up Fromm. Yep. And then backed up Daniels and he was eventually a, won the job. He was a backup as a fifth-year senior. Yeah. Daniels went down against UAB with an oblique, and then Bennett came in through five and then became the starter, went 12-0, and and then the next year went 13-0. He never lost. rest is history. Never lost. Never lost. I don't know. I think if, if – we'll, I think my, he's playing. My, my hunch is that they will – that Russell Wilson will start this year in Cleveland and that Mike that's Mike Tomlin's plan, and they will follow that plan. I'm sure there will be a package for Justin Fields. I'm sure of that. He's too big of a weapon to not take advantage. Um my my gut feeling is barring injury he won't, just because, you know Tomlin, like his word is oak all that, but I don't know. Or maybe Arthur Smith will screw it up. Yeah. He's, uh, he's gonna. Uh, he, the thing that's going to be so tricky, is the room. Like, Fields is, chesty. Russ is yeah. awkward, man. Like those are two very different Confirmed. personalities. <laughs> you know what I mean? Two very different personalities. Uh, rank the following of importance, from most important to least important, in your opinion, in the steps leading up to draft day. Oh, I like this one. Combine, pro day, interview, game tape. I think this is easy. I don't know who wants to go first. I think it's game tape, interview, combine, pro day. That was my order. The only I thought about putting combine second because of the medicals coming out of the combine. Yeah. So, I would ga- but to me, game tape, interview, combine, pro day. Yeah, down. Way down. Way down. Way down. Yeah. Unless you're one of those guys like Caleb. Like, so today it's USC, Ohio State, Alabama, Texas. All those pro days are today. Correct. Yep. So, which is odd that they put them all same on the same day. days because, yep. good Lord, if it's news. a lot of people want to be at Texas, Alabama, and USC. Ohio State doesn't have much this year because Marv's not doing anything. Did you see the Breer story today on Marv, though, explaining why? No, I didn't see that, but did you see the Dewand is at the Pro Day today? Was He's he? hanging out in the Columbus. Thing. CJ's down there, too. CJ Stroud was down there. Um, All right, so why is he not doing it? He's not doing it. Uh, so he, when he was at the Combine, he met with nine teams, and he asked all nine of them, would you like me to do a Pro Day? Do I need to? And all nine said, no, you don't. Which is fair. So so that's why he's not doing it. So instead of preparing to just... run a 40 or prepared to run a shuttle drill, he's preparing to play next season. What? Which you could argue. Why like is that, that thought process? now? I don't know. He's not done. He hasn't done much. I mean, he hasn't yeah. done much media. Um, the um, He did none at the combine. None. So I guess that's why. But yeah. And his dad wasn't exactly much for the media either. Yeah. Um, but the idea of. I'm going because you know how these guys are. I see it all the time. Like they get done with their college career, then they go to Arizona or whatever, and they train to run a fast forty. They yep. train to run a fast shuttle, like all that stuff. They train to lift. So instead of spending those three months, he's training, training to be, do that. He's he's preparing to play next season. He's trained to be a football player. Trained to be a football player. Be a football player. Football. Maybe I do a, a lot of running and exercising, a lot of biking. But um, I know you know what that's like. <laughs> Actually, I don't. 
I play real sports, not trying to be the best at exercising. That's right. You're from Montana. You don't have to do that. K Powers. Kenny Powers. He also doesn't care about handwriting. It's Penmanship. <laughs> uh, I just found this interesting note, by the way, before we started this segment. Through 50 first career starts, Trevor Lawrence is 20 and 30. <laughs> Daniel Jones is 19, 30, and 1. 85 uh, pass rating for Lawrence, 86 for Jones. 12,734 yards passing for Lawrence. You got to throw out the the Urban Meyer season. That's the problem. Yeah, 12, you four, have to throw five, that season out. 8 for Jones. And then Jones. compare their last two seasons. And that was one where Danny Jones got paid. So I still think, but Lawrence will be better. Yeah, one's trending one way, one's trending the other. But it's that. But I mean, think about his record. What did they go that year? One and yeah, one and fifteen. Yeah. So that kills. That's fourteen games. That's the that's the discrepancy in the record right there. So he's yeah. been over five hundred since then. And that's. I mean, that was that is one of the um, like it. It obviously went as bad as can be. But Shad Khan for getting out of that. Before any more damage was done, the thing that's crazy is that if and he was, wasn't able to get out of that and like save some because of some of the transgressions. I think Urban let it go, or I don't know, maybe they did a quiet settlement. But like, the, he was fired with cause. That's what I mean. I mean, if Urban had walked straight and narrow, he you get that whole settlement, you get the whole contract. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Final one today on the CBD Whip, and we'll get into this a little more coming up in just a few minutes. Your favorite March Madness memory? Arizona winning it, 97. I was there when they beat uh, Kansas and then Providence in you went Birmingham. To that, you went to that – oh, because you were at – I was in Atlanta. Atlanta at that time, yeah, so you went. Kid, Danny was a big fan, so we oh, went down there. that's amazing. You were at the one they beat KU. KU was the number one overall seed. And then for Providence, we were able to get, like, seats on the floor, basically, because all the KU Kansas. people were – furious and giving their tickets away so it's funny so kansas was uh, a one seed right it was was two years in a row where they were bounced as the number one overall seed like that's paul pierce and rafe lafrance and yeah yeah. and then you get squad then you get austin crozier and god sham god at providence yeah beat them and then in the tournament you beat one carolina and one kentucky you beat three one seeds arizona best tournament run ever people didn't realize that they didn't realize the talent on that arizona team they underachieved they three, grossly. That's yeah, why they were they a four had seed. Three NBA guards. You had Bibby Dickerson, Jason Terry, yeah. Miles Simon Miles was an Simon excellent was college dude. player. So you really had four because Simon yes. played in the league too. You had four NBA guards. So you had three who were three good dudes. Yeah, and then Terry came off the bench. Dickerson so like, before he got hurt. Their bigs were good too. And uh, AJ Bramlett. AJ Bramlett. Yeah. yeah. They had Eugene Edgerson, who was yeah. like an enforcer, went to play for the Harlem Globetrotters. They had Bennett Davison. Yeah. No, it was, those were. That's a different era where you yes. had. Veterans, veterans who were pros veteran who stuck around yeah that's right um i mean there's tons of them when i was a kid like yeah that's why those teams you know you remember those teams. like i remember the um i certainly remember a, a t- 88 kansas was my first memory a six seed going all danny the way manning. with danny manning yeah um i've had fond memories of the unlv run until oh the fix God. was in with uh, duke in 91 um you really want to die on that sword, don't you? It's pretty obvious. I mean, like great Larry Johnson, <clears throat> Stacy. So I had Mike DeCourcy on this morning. So he's been to the last thirty-four Final Fours. Sporting News guy, been writing for the Sporting News forever. And he's, I asked him, I said, well, "What was your favorite memory?" And he said, "He goes, well, '91 because I saw Duke at a regional, and he goes, I think they can beat him." And he didn't even have to say who. Like you knew who. Like the kids don't have a point of, view, of reference on this, but. UNLV won the national title the year before, beating Duke in Denver by 30. By 30 like, oh, whipped them. Um, and then all those guys came back, and they were all pros. Greg Anthony, uh, Larry Johnson, Stacey Ogman. Anderson Hunt. Anderson Hunt. They all came George back. Ackles. Ackles was on that team. Yeah. They all came back. So the next year, after they committed to coming back, the NCAA said, you can't play in postseason play. You're out. You can't play in postseason play. And then – UNLV negotiated with the NCAA and say, well, next year we won't be on television and you can ban us next year. All of these guys came back yep. to play. So they go into that season in 91. Nobody was is within double digits of them all year. All year. They smoked everybody. Yeah, and, then, they were, and then Duke in the national semifinal, Duke got him. Greg Anthony fouled out with like five minutes left in the game. Yeah. Um, and and never. Duke got him. Yep. That was it. Uh, but the, I'll tell you this, though. If you are a fan Arizona of – Arizona should have beaten them, too. I think it was two, the first the year they won it. Well, the 
Arizona, the Sean Elliott team was the one that, that's 89 or eight, what was the 90? The Sean Elliott team was ridiculous. Yeah, they and Steve Kerr, Lofton. Sean Elliott, Lofton. Lofton flopped in Curd. front of, I want to say, either Anthony or Anderson Hunt, and they drained a three right in Arizona's eye. Yeah, that could be. But that, I mean, I think that was after Elliott, though. Sean Elliott was National yeah, Player of the Year, I think, in 88 or 89. I'm not sure. That's when I had Either my way. Dick Vitale t-shirt. It was like like a little cartoon with a big head of Dick Vitale and said, Arizona's number one, baby. That's right. That was my great shirt. I would tell you this. If you if you went to Big State U or not, if you the most fun that I've had is following a team through the tournament. So in 2012, when Ohio State, they were a two seed, they had lost in the Big Ten Championship game to Michigan State. Um, and they they went Pittsburgh, Boston, New Orleans. So first round was in Pittsburgh, Sweet 16 in Boston, and then New Orleans. Because it's such a small group of people that do it that you get to know everybody. Right? So you're like, it's like a month vacation. Yeah, sure. It's awesome. It's really cool. If you can, if, if you're ever in the position to be able to do it, I, I just can't recommend it more highly enough. It's one of the most fun things you can do in sports. All right, so I had it. It was the Sweet 16. It was the Sweet 16 that year. Arizona is the one seed. UNLV is the four seed in 1989. And UNLV wins it 68-67 on an Anderson Hunt three right over Kenny Lofton, who took charge. It was Sean Elliott. So Larry Elliott. Johnson would not have been on that team. No. Hunt, that was Ogman. Ogman, Anthony, David Butler, Moses Scurry. Yeah. And Eccles, Eccles came off the bench. It was for Arizona. It was the one. Sean Elliott. Kenny Lofton, Judd Bushler, Matty Muehlbach, yeah. Anthony Cook, Sean Rooks, who Sean also Rooks. played in the league, Matt yeah. Othick, Wayne Womack, and they lost by one. Anderson Hunt shot. Yeah. That, that one. And then Zago, so UNLV added. Zago, not. Well, that was, they were the one overall. They were the they one were, overall. Yeah, they were yep, loaded. Yep, yep, yep. So Utah's hosting the. They're eight point uh, favorites in the game. Utah's hosting the, the first round this week, or second, third round, whatever the heck. It yeah, is in Salt now. Lake City? Yeah, Salt Lake City. Someone just took a picture and sent it uh, because, you know, wh- when you're working at Media Row, you go to your spot and there's a little placard that's like, yeah. here's your Wi-Fi, here's the yep. password, all that. The wireless network uh, uh, password is Jordan pushed off. <laughs> good for them. Not that they were going to win the series anyway, but no. good, good for them. Yeah. Yeah. That's that was in a game six, wasn't it? Uh, yes. It was a game six. Yes. Yeah. That, that's kind of like what happened. Like, when remember in the old days, like the Buckner play for the Red Sox? Like, everybody thinks that that was the end of the World Series. Yeah. It was no, not, not the end of the World it Series. No. no. It would not. And it was but he not. redeemed himself and caught a baby. He did. He did that, too. That's great. The great LD. All right. There you go. All right. Very good. Griff. We got a Griff fact of the day coming up. We're doing a little bracket stuff as well. Oh, man. Uh, you got a little Cleveland Browns Daily on 850. You're 29 minutes away. You're not. If you've been injured, the best fans in the world deserve award-winning attorneys to get them. We'll do a short segment here, and then the final one. All right, sounds good. Game and every crowd. Elk and Elk, proud partner of the Cleveland Browns. Discover the meaning of grass without limits with Forever Lawn's high-performance turf solutions. We are passionate about providing beautiful, functional spaces that improve communities and lives, covering everything from putting greens and pet parks to playgrounds and sports fields. Put, put. As the official synthetic turf partner of the Cleveland Browns, we are eager to further our impact and help you on your next project. Visit foreverlawn.com to discover the possibilities of grass without limits. That's foreverlawn.com. Howdy, I'm Miles Garrett, and I'm Joe Thomas. And even if you were Miles Thomas or Joe Garrett, we get the same level of care at University Hospital because the same people who care for the Cleveland Browns care for all athletes in Northeast Ohio. With expert sports medicine and world-class everyday care. University Hospital Drzezinski Sports Medicine Institute is here for you. University Hospital Drzezinski Sports Medicine Institute at UH Azusa in Beechwood is now open with everything you need as an athlete. Learn more at uhsports.org. Bring on the fun with the Valley Bet Sportsbook app. Football will be back before you know it, Browns fans. But even in the offseason, it's never too early to kick things off with Valley Bet. Place your first bet of $50 or more on the Belly Bet Sportsbook app, and you'll get a $50 bonus bet to use on your Browns or any sports you love. Prepare to bring more fun to your fandom with the Belly Bet Sportsbook app. Belly Bet, an official sports betting partner of the Cleveland Browns. Must be 21 plus. Ohio only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. 
Good school attendance is the foundation for student success. Even missing a few days a month can have a lasting impact on learning. The Cleveland Browns Foundation is a proud founding partner of the Stay in the Game Network, partnering with school districts to dramatically improve attendance in Ohio. The network partners with more than 40 school districts, impacting more than 230,000 students. Increasing attendance is a team sport. Visit stayinthegame.org to take action and support strong attendance in your community. Right now, for every two winners you buy, you get the next two free this week only. Get a free triple pane upgrade. Call today to double your energy tax credit. Schedule your free in-home estimate today. Call 216-518-8900. I love my windows. They got that brand new home effect. Second 20. Universal Window Direct. We rally around the Browns no matter what. And if you've been injured, the best fans in the world deserve award-winning attorneys to get them the compensation they need. Elk and Elk is proud to stand with you in every game and every cry. Elk and Elk, proud partner of the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland Browns Daily, brought to you by BallyBet, now live in Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland. And be part of one of the most passionate fan bases in the NFL. Join Next Gen STM, presented by Ticketmaster, the official wait list of the Cleveland Browns. Be a Next Gen STM, best chance to become season ticket member in future seasons. Visit clevelandbrowns.com slash nextgenSTM to reserve your spot today. Time for the Griff Fact of the Day. Hit it. Fact of the Day, Fact of the Day, Fact of the Day. It's the Griff Fact of the Day. All right, we wanted one specifically about Griff. He told me this morning that he is impressed if you have a hole-in-one on your resume. That was what it impressed him very much. Zagura. Mr. Zagura. Prepare to be impressed, Griff. I've got two. Griff's got one. Griff's got one. Griff's got one. I have one in mini golf. He said that didn't count. That doesn't no, count. No, that does not count. Get Griff on the microphone, please. What is the best golfer you've played with who doesn't have one or do you think that if you are a certain handicap you definitely have one Hmm. because you can you can luck into one you can luck into a hole in one for sure like if if you are a because what was that thing they did during remember during covid didn't one guy like it was try forever to hit a a pro a pro showed how long it took him how long it took him to just the same shit over and over again to hit a hole in one and then jersey jerry did it it took him about 48 hours though right it was a very long time it's a lot but he did it he accomplished it. A lot of swings. Yeah. Griff, tell me the story of your hole in one, please. Yes. <clears throat> excuse me. So Griff, it was Cam. Excuse. Griff, Griff Cam, please. <laughs> so it was a few years ago, back whenever I was in college, I went to a par three course in Amarillo with a couple of buddies of mine. Mm. And we, you know, we were just trying to have some fun out in the <sighs> blistering heat of the Texas summer. And Amarillo by morning. Yep. And we were on either hole 15 or 16. It was like a. 180 yards but it was a straight shot i had no yep. idea that it even went in my friends had to tell me about it and then i didn't believe them still so we had to go up to the hole fi- find the ball in the hole and then it, we finally celebrated and it was probably one of the greatest moments of my life Griff. mr zagura yes is a hole in one on a par three course a hole in one yes 180 yards yes it was 180 yeah yeah, uh, that made it legit. 180 yeah. to 200. Okay, yes. so yeah. we're okay. Yeah. So then, then it was like going. a 60 yard hole. Like, yeah, because yeah. those are those there. Those are there. There are you some run of those. some of those. Yeah, but no, that's that is 100. It's a hell of a par three hole. 100 percent legit. That's a legitimate par three course. If you're talking 180, yeah. 200 yards on a par three. It's how like the one at Mount Shadows. It has some that are like <laughs> 190, and there's one that's 70 to an island green. But there's 220 yard ones. Yeah. Griff, that's awesome. Good job. Good job out of you, Griff. I yeah, I got it. two. One was in uh, right after college in Atlanta, but it was an uphill hole, so yep. I didn't see the ball go in. Um, East Lake? It was not at East Lake, uh, and although I have played East Lake. Natural. Great course. 
the second was a few years ago at Walden when oh we had the video has it on video. My kids were with me. It was unreal. That's right. I remember so that one well. Take off running. It yeah, was great. Yeah, that nonsense. was nonsense. I have I have way more makes from the fairway, even from you know, one fifty plus, than I have hold ones. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that was crazy that Miss K had it unreal. on video. Yeah. We, and my kids the odds of that are, I mean, odds yeah, of that are so. infinitesimally small. Yeah. All right. Very good. Good job, Griff. All right. Coming up next, a oh, little, little, little brackets. We'll have a little bracket fun. Get you set. You'll listen to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Be sure to check out the Brown social media channels daily to play the Brown Central Scratch Off game for your chance to win club seats and other great prizes. Presented by the Ohio Lottery, the official lottery of your Cleveland Browns. The NCAA men's tur- they say it started last night. It- NBC says to me, he's like, Dad, this is ridiculous because we're watching Howard. Ohio State was playing in the NIT. And that good game. Howard was play- It was. And then Howard was playing Wagner. And then it would be in a really good game. Uh, they came all the way back. And he's like, Dad, this is ridiculous. That This should be two 16s. Like, if you win your conference tournament, you're you in. Be in the tournament. Yep. Um, they, they screwed I said, this up. They really screwed it up. And then you get that garbage Virginia team. They should have fired that coach this morning. Well, the thing is, he won a national title at Virginia. Yeah. So he has six tournament wins in the last seven seasons. All of them are in the one run. Yeah. He has th- he has four one and duns. Or he has show- four lo- four no win tournaments. Yeah. And then he's got the one where he won the, won the national title, including a 16 1 loss. His four last losses are all double digit seeds in the first round. Yeah, this was the one year where they actually were a double digit seed as well. But, like, this is nuts. Um, but the, yet he won a natty at Virginia. You can't win a national championship at Virginia. What the it's hell unreal. are we talking about? So it's the craziest thing. And his dad, Dick, was incredible. At he's first at Wisconsin yeah. Green Bay, and then he went to University of Wisconsin, and this was their this is their thing. Like they just bleed clock, score in the forties. It's gross. It's awful ball though. It's gross. Awful. Ball. Yeah. yeah. You were getting throttled last night. They didn't score for over nine minutes. Yeah. Were they at fourteen points in the first half, Uno? Fourteen. That's correct. wasn't it forty to fourteen at half. It wasn't that bad of a blowout. I but thought Colorado State had, had 40, 40 at half. It was like 27 to 40. It was awful, awful. on both sides of yeah. the ball at that point. And then are there game, two games tonight? Yeah, Montana State plays uh, Grambling in the early game, which that sucks for both of them. Grambling's f- trying to be in the tournament for the first time ever. They should be in it. They, they should be in. Like They should have the experience of going to play Purdue. And Montana State should have the experience of being a 16 and going to play UConn. Yes. Like They shouldn't be playing each other for the right to play a one. It's no. absurd. It's mean. It's mean. Now, some of them, li- I will say this, some of them like it because they get the tournament share. If you win a game, you get a tournament share. So, like, for Grambling or Montana State, that's a big deal to win a tournament game. That's a big tournament share that you're getting. Yep. Because you're getting two tournament games. All right, as you get ready to fill out your bracket. Yeah. This is from ESPN, the 2024 NCAA Men's Tournament, 10 rules for filling out the bracket. Number one, advanced one first four team to the round of 32. What was that? All right, give me this again. What? Advance one first four team to the round of 32. So the most famous of this was UCLA. They went all the way to a final four. At okay, least so one I would team say that, that played would be... in Dayton since 2011 advanced to the round of 32 or later. So that could be Boise State plays Colorado tonight. Colorado State looked really good. A lot of people thought they should have been in anyway. I like that. Go ahead. Number two, do not predict a 16 over one upset. Didn't do it. Yeah. No. Who was the other 10 that got in? Uh, it's Colorado Boise State tonight. Uh, it was Colorado State. Oh, Colorado State, State got in last night. Okay. Predict at least one 12 over five upset. What are my 12 and fives, Uno? Bless you. Bless you. Uh, the first one is San Diego State is the five, UAB is the 12. Not doing that one. You have St. Mary's, the five, Grand Canyon, the 12. Grand Canyon could get them. That's Grand Bryce Canyon. Drew. Yeah. Grand, Can- is, Grand Canyon could get them. That is Pedro's alma mater. St. Grand St. Canyon or St. Mary's? And, St. Mary's. And my mom, yeah. Oh, okay. Very good. The, are they the Gales? The Gales. Yeah. The five seed, Wisconsin, and 12 seed, James there's, Madison. There's one. That's the one They're I have. There's down. one. Yeah, the Badgers. I can see both Go of those happening. Badgers are going down, sad. Yeah. And then the other one is Gonzaga and McNeese State. Led McNeese by State is dangerous. That's Will Wade. They score in the 90s. I could see three 12s winning, honestly. They had the Mc- conference I could see, player of the year, McNeese. Yeah, I could see Shahadi. McNeese, Madison, and uh, Grand Canyon all winning. Number four from ESPN, eliminate at least one number two seed prior to the Sweet 16. Number two seeds advance to the second weekend of the tournament at a considerably lower rate, 63%. And hmm, one seed. Since seeding began in '79, all four two seeds have reached the Sweet 16 only six of 44 times. Hmm. So that's Tennessee. Give me the twos: Iowa State, Marquette, Arizona, Tennessee. I have to send Arizona. I don't know about Marquette. Marquette's got good guards. Are I can see Iowa Florida? State. Marquette? Iowa State's been riding high, but sometimes you, they fall. So they the would race. play Washington State or Drake. Who's that? Iowa State in the first round. No, the second, second round. 
Uh, I like their. I, I think Drake's pretty good though. People seem so to like Flo- them. So could Florida beat Marquette? I don't think so, but maybe. To me, the one to watch, unfortunately, is Arizona because that Nevada team is really good. They are good. They're Nevada's got to beat Dayton first. <laughs> Both those Dayton and Nevada. Both would of be those good. teams could probably. The one thing that I'm curious Arizona's is that's the third best Arizona. odds to win the tournament. Okay, they haven't. Let's just all calm down. Well, here's here well the, since that championship. They haven't. Here's the thing with Zona though. Um, they are one other thing, and I don't know if this is in there or not, Gibbe. So I don't want to be stepping on your research. Um, you have to be top 20 in offense and defense. So I don't know if that's in there. There are five teams in this year's tournament. There's another article I saw on that. There's, there's five teams in this year's tournament that are, that are top five in offense rating and defense rating. It's Arizona, North Carolina, Houston, Connecticut, and Purdue. There you go. Number five, at least uh, advance at least one double-digit seed to the Sweet 16. Since 1979, a double-digit seed has advanced to the Sweet 16 in 40 of 44 years, including the past 15. So, the hands yeah. up there. Yep. Uh, number six, advance at least one team seeded five or lower to the Elite Eight. Yeah. There is nearly always an unexpected team. Since 79, at least one team seeded fifth or lower has advanced to the Elite Eight in 41 of 44 years. I've got, I've got St. Mary's. St. Your, Mary's Your Arizona. loyalty to family. Boy. Some would argue that the thing that you love most in the world is family. Some would. They would be wrong. Well, no, they wouldn't be wrong. That would be number one. That would be number one. Family and friends. Like personal relationships. Personal relationships. Nana's yeah. listening. Family. Family. Number seven. Do number not two. advance a double-digit <laughs> seed to the final four. You know what I would be curious about on all this? Is if what if you did this in the last – If like I'm wondering what this, the data would look like in the last eight years. Well, you also have to get because it right. Because forever, correct, but forever, this one of the smartest ways to like win a bracket pool in your office was chalk. Yeah. Because chalk usually wins. Yep. A lot, of, a lot of ones get to the Final Four. A lot of ones get to the Elite Eight. That, but in the last eight years, it's been chaos. They said this year, I was reading something that thinks there will be more chalk early because you had so many tournaments that were busted. Right. By undeserving teams mm-hmm. that are going to be the high seeds that are going to just be smoked. Going to get smoked. Yeah. All right. I got 30 seconds here. Advanced no more than two teams from the same conference to the final four. Yep. Uh, number nine, pick a number one seed to win the national championship. Don't he- ever think this one. Since Houston. 79, 26 of 44 national champions have been one seeds. And in number 10, it says, but don't pick UConn to do it. So I guess UConn trying to go for the repeat. That Florida was the last one to do it. My my final four, I got Houston, Purdue on that side, and Auburn, Arizona on the other. I think I got uh, Kentucky, Purdue, UConn, and Carolina, I think. Or Carolina, Arizona, I can't remember. So you have who? I probably went with Bootsy. You have Bootsy's Houston losing to Kentucky? Uh, yeah. In the Elite Eight? Yep. That's probably it. Is that an Elite Eight game? Yep, that it would be, be Elite Eight. Okay. All right. Kentucky final. plays no defense, but I saw him in person. It'd be so a awesome. little bit of yeah. heartstrings on that. Family, All right. family, number one. Uh, so much more to come. You listen to ah. the Browns Daily on eight fifty ESPN Cleveland.
All right, kids. I wish you the best of luck, but you wouldn't know what to do with it. You know what that's from? Is that uh, Alec Baldwin? Yeah. Is it because of the way I delivered it that you picked I up on I felt that, that yeah. yeah. And I think I remember him doing it from the Always Be Coblins, a sketch. That's right. That's as well right. as the Always Be Closing actual scene. The Always scene. Be Coblins. Yeah, Glenn, Gar- Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I wish you luck, but you wouldn't know what to do with you it. You wouldn't have to. Oh, God, dude! Have a great trip, brother. Well, got to get there first. We'll see how it goes. Um, Hopefully, I'll see the kids this this afternoon. They'll have time. We'll have, They're yeah. all packed up and ready to go. Well, we got to you got to send them off with send a, Vic. Them on a Vic. Yeah. Send them out on a Vic. I think you're gonna have to sub Bootsy out. I think Bootsy NBC is the best. That's the best scenario. I'd like to see you and you Beamsy and NBC go to work. I think you we guys haven't can do some yet. work. We haven't seen that. Yet. Uh, the next level is coming up next. We're back tomorrow. Cleveland Browns Daily, eight fifty ESPN Cleveland. You're on a great show, guys.